Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today's video is what you've all been waiting for. This is my new and improved how-to claw guide. My last guide I posted exactly one year ago with over 2 million views. And I thought as an anniversary on my most well-received video, I would remake it, but this time bigger and better. And a lot has changed since then like a lot. So the topics that we are going to be covering today are as follows. What is Claw? Where I briefly explain what Claw is and the benefits from playing. Why play Claw? This is probably the most important thing to know because there are so many ways to hold a controller with different controller binds and professional controllers and now you can even have add-ons to your standard controller. There are all these options out there so why even learn Claw? Then we'll be touching on the types of Claw. There's a variety of different ways to play Claw, some a lot easier than others so it's important to know what will be beneficial for you. Next we'll talk about the learning process. This is the most important topic that not many people seem to cover in their claw tutorials. It's very easy for someone to say just go and learn claw but actually knowing what your fingers are supposed to do and how much you should be practicing is very important. The next part will be based around tips that I've learned throughout my nine years of playing claw through Black Ops 1 and 2, Modern Warfare 2 and 3, Battlefield 3, 4 and 1 and of course Fortnite. I've been doing this a long time and have been very skilled at every game I've played. And last but definitely not least, injuries and prevention. Because the most important thing above all is making sure you don't hurt yourself and maintaining a physical healthy state when gaming. Anyway, if you would like to show your support in this video, a like is definitely appreciated. And if you want to go beyond that, you can use code FLEA in the Fortnite item shop. But without further ado, my name is Flea and this is my how to play Claw, the complete guide. Let's do this. Now, first of all, disclaimers. I just wanna say, yes, I am currently playing Fortnite, but this is not a Fortnite specific claw tutorial. No matter what game you play, this video will be beneficial for you. Secondly, this guide can be for any controller. I'll mainly be referring to a PS4 controller as that's what I use, but I also have an Xbox controller that I'll feature throughout this video. Thirdly, I want to quickly explain to you what the name of the sections are on a controller. I will use these terms a lot in this video, so knowing what I'm talking about is very important. So start Starting with these two here, these are the triggers, then above that these two are the bumpers, and then here we have the action buttons, then here we have the d-pad, but together they can be the face buttons, and then we have the analog sticks. And lastly, as you can see, I do use control freaks, they don't have anything to do with playing claw, but you can purchase yours with the link in the description and you can use code FLEA for 10% off. So starting off with the first part of the video. What is claw? Claw is when you bring your index fingers up off the bumpers and on to the face buttons. The name obviously comes from your finger being shaped as an animal claw like a cat or a bird. Now I know there is right hand claw where it's just plain claw with your right hand, same goes for left hand claw, but I highly recommend if you're learning claw to play double claw. Whether you learn one side at a time or both at once, it can be extremely beneficial having both index fingers playing claw because it makes sure you never have to take your thumb off those analog sticks to press any face buttons. Now why play claw? Good question. Claw is a very popular method of holding a controller that allows you to press the face buttons without having to take your thumb off the analog sticks. This can be extremely helpful in fast paced games such as Call of Duty and Fortnite because you're always constantly moving and aiming. Taking your thumb off for a split second can affect your gameplay and ultimately lead to bad performance. Taking your right thumb off that right analog stick to press a button is the equivalent of taking your hand off a mouse in order to press the keyboard. It is definitely not practical and can lead to choppy gameplay because your character's movement is not consistent. Now an easy workaround for this could be binding buttons to your L3 and R3 and while this is good it only saves you for two button binds you still have to press all the other buttons with your thumb. And then we have the world of professional controllers which in my opinion are huge scams. The best option you have here is Xbox Elites and even those don't last forever because no controllers are built to last forever. Paying over two to three hundred dollars for a temporary controller is not the smartest thing you can do and it's the reason I've declined many companies offering unlimited amount of their controllers to use in videos. I use a standard controller because I want to show you that you don't need to spend three hundred dollars for a controller with all these features since it's only gonna last you a couple of months. As far as paddle attachments go, they're a great cheap alternative and I highly recommend them. Once again, you're only giving yourself access to two extra buttons instead of the eight you would from Learning Claw. I'll be making a video on the PlayStation 4 back button attachment very soon, so stay tuned for that. Why Claw? Because it's cheap, so cheap that it literally costs you nothing. Except the price of a standard controller, which in 
my opinion, are the most durable and long-lasting controllers that you can buy. Y-Claw, because it's practical and efficient, you'll always be ahead of everyone else, no matter which game you swap to, because not every game supports custom controller binds. Y-Claw, because it's a skill that once you learn, you'll carry through your entire gaming career, and I'm a living example of that. Now that I've discussed what Claw is and why you should play, hopefully you understand the reasoning behind it all, and we can get into the types of Claw and how to hold your controller. This is where we start getting a bit practical, so if you've made it this far, I'm glad I have your attention. Now let's actually learn Claw. First things first, the types of Claw. Now it's quite a grey area when it comes to naming the types of Claw. I'm sure you've all heard of Claw, Double Claw, Left Hand Claw, Right Hand Claw, even Crab Claw, Spider Claw, Octopus Claw, all these types just funny names for playing Claw. Yes, there are some very weird ways to hold a controller, but the main one I'll be covering today is just standard Claw and the different ways that you can do it. But before you learn Claw, if you're not using your middle fingers and index fingers for the bumpers and triggers like this, then you already have some catching up to do because Claw is very useless if you're not using your middle fingers already. If your middle fingers are still down holding the controller like this, you're wasting fingers. You don't need six fingers holding the controller. It's still very easy holding them with just four. So if you're not doing that yet, that's step one. Start using your middle fingers. All right, so now we have our middle fingers up here and holding the controller like this. This right here is your standard controller grip. So thumbs on the analog sticks, index fingers on the bumpers and middle fingers on the triggers. Your next step is to bring your index fingers up off the bumpers and onto the face buttons. As you can see, I'm straining my finger. I can't even play claw because my finger just won't reach. I'm bending it as much as I can, but as you can see, there's a huge separation here. This just does not feel natural. And this is everyone's biggest mistake when playing claw is that they're so used to playing like this, all of a sudden they just try and whip their index fingers up and they literally can't even bring their index fingers up onto those face buttons. This is where my biggest tip comes in of rotating your wrist. So as you can see, a standard player would play like this, whereas a claw player would have a bit more of a wrist rotation out this way and plays more like this. So standard player, claw player, standard player, claw player. It is all in the wrist rotation. I can't stress this enough. Your fingers are not too small to play claw. It's not uncomfortable. You just have to rotate your wrist. So basically you want to be pressing these face buttons as naturally as possible. So this is a straight 90 degree angle and it's obviously too much. And this is a straight zero degree angle. And as you can see, I can't even press those buttons. But how I like to play is I come in on a nice 45 degree angle with my finger. So have my wrist positioned where my finger comes in at a nice 45 degree angle and I can press every button with ease. So if I just show you from a side angle here, as you can see, I'm not coming in and playing claw like this. I'm actually coming in on an angle and I'm playing claw like this. So not like this, I'm actually rotating my wrist and playing like this. But here's where we encounter our first issue with learning claw. A lot of people say their aim is bad when they start playing claw, and that reason is because you are rotating your wrist. So if you just look at my thumb here, this is how someone normally would play. But when you play claw because you're rotating your wrist, as you can see, my thumb is now positioned down here. So normal, claw, normal, claw. So now that we're playing like this, my thumb is positioned at a different angle and it will make my aim feel terrible, but don't worry because it won't take long for your brain to recalibrate your aim with your new thumb position. So it will feel weird, but trust me, give it time, it will be worth it. All right, but how do I play claw? Good question. So the way I play claw is I keep my middle fingers on the triggers like this, and then my index finger presses the bumpers and the face buttons. So when I'm playing Fortnite, and as you've seen in my hand cams, this finger actually comes up to R1 and down quite a lot, but in the rare case where my index finger is maybe pressing jump and I don't have enough time to come back up to R1, my middle finger will actually come off R2 and come up to R1 like this. So 99% of the time, index finger presses R1, but if the index finger is busy doing something and I have to press R1, my middle finger will come up and do it for me. So on Fortnite, if I wanted to jump and place a floor, I'd have to do this most of the time, but I've actually trained myself to press both at once if I wanted to. And this is a really good reason of actually using your middle finger up here because it can be a very versatile finger it can press the triggers as well as the bumpers because you can imagine if I didn't even have my middle fingers up there and they were down here my index finger would now have to press the trigger the bumper and the face buttons and this is just way too much work for one finger so bringing that finger up can assure you're pressing everything as fast as possible also some claw players even go a step beyond that and actually bring their ring fingers up onto R2 so they have ring fingers on triggers 
middle fingers on bumpers and index fingers on action buttons. Now, although this is the best way to play claw, in my opinion, it is extremely hard to have three fingers on the controller and only hold the entire controller with just your little pinkies. So that's why I like to put four fingers down here. It gives me a comfortable grip and I can use six fingers on the controller playing claw. This is why I said previously in the video that if you're not already using your middle fingers to start by just playing like this and using your index and middle fingers up here and then eventually once you've trained your middle fingers to be pressing the triggers, then you can move to claw. Also one thing claw is extremely useful for is pressing this touchpad button. Now as you can clearly see, I use the touchpad quite a lot in Fortnite because it is my edit button. So this is actually how I play claw. And this is also another good reason to learn left hand claw as well because even if you're not gonna claw the D-pad, clawing the touchpad down here or even up the top up here is a really good way to utilize that index finger when playing claw. And that's why claw is the best way to hold the controller because you can press so many buttons, including the touchpad, all these face buttons and literally everything on the controller without ever taking your thumbs off those analog sticks. So now you know how to play claw, let's talk about the learning process. There's a variety of different ways to learn claw. Each game has its own unique way of letting you practice, like Call of Duty, you can create a custom game with bots and in Fortnite you can jump in playground or creative. I highly recommend when learning claw start off by spending as much time in these practice modes as you can because this will help you learn it a lot faster. A big mistake people make when learning claw is day one they jump into a public game get frustrated and keep dying because they find it hard or uncomfortable to play but when learning anything new you have to be patient and start off smart by practicing because the more you practice the faster you're gonna learn it. But one thing is for certain you do have to put the time into practice a couple hours a day every day and I promise you you will learn claw in just one week yes that's right if you practice claw won't take any longer than a week and during that week every day you wake up it'll get easier and easier until you'll be so used to playing like it you can't go back then congratulations you have a very useful skill that you can carry through with you your entire life now for some very quick tips you can keep in mind when learning claw I will make a separate claw tips video soon but for the sake of this video, tip one, do you even need to learn claw? If you don't play games that often, maybe it might not be worth your time learning claw. Like I said, a back paddle attachment for your standard controller is a very good alternative. But if you do play a lot and are serious about your gaming, I highly recommend it. Tip two is find what feels comfortable for you. There is no right or wrong way to play claw. Everyone is built different. So experiment moving your wrist around. Maybe you might like a more natural way of pressing the buttons, whereas some people People like to really rotate their wrists and come in from a top angle. Just try different things and like I said, see what works for you. Tip three is just straight up consistency. You're never going to learn something if you're not consistent with it, no matter what it is. It may seem like a big task and frustrating to learn, but every day you will wake up a little bit better than yesterday. And like I said, all it takes is just one week. Tip number four is watch and learn. There are many different players who play Claw, including Faye Sway, Razor X, and a whole bunch of others. So just watch your favorite creators hand cam videos and see how they play and if it will work for you. And tip five is subscribe because you're not going to get this type of high quality content anywhere else on YouTube. And now the final topic and arguably the most important is injuries and prevention. So I'm going to keep this part short and sweet, but basically I know a lot of claw players and in my experience, I've heard a lot of people saying, don't play claw, it'll ruin your hands and all that sort of stuff. But in my nine years of playing claw, I've never actually seen one person get injured while playing claw. The people that probably have been injured by playing claw are the ones that just jump in. They aren't smart about it and they don't do any stretches and that's a really easy way to get an injury. But if you rotate your wrist, pressing the buttons in a more natural fashion, there's no reason claw will cause any injury from playing normally. Now there are a lot of factors that go into injuries, but the biggest thing to look out for is RSI or repetitive strain injury. This is not a claw specific injury, but as the title says, it's an injury from repeatedly doing something for a very long period of time. Whether you're a controller player, keyboard and mouse player, hockey player, tennis player, literally anything that revolves you doing something repeatedly for a long period of time, then yes, you are at risk of injury. When I used to play Fortnite for eight hours a day, every single day, I had terrible pain in my wrists, but no human should do anything that long every single day. I now only play a few hours a day, five times a week, and I am in perfect health. One thing I highly, highly, 
highly recommend is exercises for injury prevention. The best way to treat an injury is prevent it from ever happening in the first place. There are a lot of extremely good injury prevention exercise videos on YouTube that you can do in just a few minutes every single day that will ensure you maintain a physical healthy state when gaming for long periods of time. Just typing in the best gaming wrist stretches will give you plenty of easy to do exercises that you can learn in just minutes. And in my opinion, out of this whole entire video, staying physically healthy should always be your number one priority. And on that note, I'm going to conclude this long awaited how to claw video. If you made it this far, I really hope you learned something and whether or not you do play claw after this, I really appreciate your time in watching this video because it did take a very long time to make. Also, if you did make it this far and you have any questions, do be sure to comment them below as I'm going to be answering as many comments as I can and leave a purple heart in your comments so I know you made it to the end of the video. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one.